Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome to our very first class of Arabic 101, Volume 1. This here is the book. It says Arabic course. This is Volume 1. I want to tell you before we start the class how you can benefit most from this class. We have that this class is being recorded and it's being taught at the same time. So even though you're not here with us, you should uh, pretend like you are here with us. A lot of times we will read from the book. A lot of times I will explain um, certain things that are found in the exercises. And you have to follow along so that you can become uh, like a student inside the class. Before we get into the book, I want to explain how the Arabic words are broken down in language. You have something known as Al-Kalam, which means speech or the speech. Okay? And Al-Kalam is going to be of three categories. Oh, look at that. The pen's working good now. Let me rewrite it. Okay, and these three categories are going to be making up all of the words in the Arabic language. You have something known as ismun, fi'lun, and harfun. Okay. All right. The first one that we're going to take is ismun. And ismun means it is a noun. Most of the time, for those of you that know a little bit of Arabic, you hear ism means name. That's correct. But in this context, it means noun. A noun could be something that is a person, place, or thing, but it can also be a pronoun as well when you say ismun. So I'm going to use the name Muhammad as just a regular name, right? Muhammadun is a pronoun. Also you have pronouns that are like he, her, she, them. Those are considered pronouns in Arabic and they're called dhamair. But for now, we're just going to put simply something like huwa, right? Hiya. It could be a place. Like where we're, where we're at right now, is in a mosque. We're gonna say a masjid, masjidun. Okay. So that's in regards to um, an ism, and there's still a lot more categorizations under ism. Fi'lun is a verb. And a verb in the Arabic language has three categories. Madi, Mudari, and Amr. Madiun, Mudari'un, Amrun. Past, present, and you would think what for this last one? What would you think, Amir? Future. It's not future though. That's what you normally think, but but it's actually a request or a command. And now the word harf, right? Or let me give an example for each one of these. A common <coughs> a common word that we use is qara'a. means he read yaqra'u right and finally iqra all 
actually it's without that. Okay. Harf literally means letter. But what it's referring to is that if it is not a fi'l and it is not an ism, it is a harf. So it doesn't necessarily mean it's a letter, but it's talking about not in the category of fi'l and not in the category of ism that makes up a harf. So something like min to mean from, right? If you're going to ask a question, you have to put a hamza in front of the word, a alif hamza, right? And it's called the alif of inquiry, which is istifham. Okay? Um, something that is just like the letter lam, another harf jar added to the word like lillah for Allah. So that's considered a harf. So you can see here that there's a har harf can be made up of two letters. It can be made up of just the one letters, just like here or there. Even though something like this translated in English can mean did or are or is. All right. Let's dive into the book. You guys have any questions or... Pretty much just making sense, right? Like we said, if you want to pay attention, you have to pretend like you're a student in the class. Because when we interact with the class, sometimes we might go off topic, sometimes you know, we will uh, speak about something religious. You have to really um, follow along with the book and follow along with the conversations. Here is where we shall begin. Yeah, go ahead and hold that up. It says, Ad-Darsul Awwal. I hold it up so the class can see, really. It's not, you know, for, for the listeners, you guys are just going to have to, I'll read out the page, and then you guys can follow along like that. We're on page five, right? And I will start to include Arabic words so that you guys can start to understand Arabic. All right. Because normally when you teach a new language, you're supposed to only teach in that language that you are, you know, trying to teach. الدرس الأول ما معنى الدرس الأول The first lesson So الدرس الأول at the top of the page is the first lesson We point to this object here and when you point at something you're going to say this and how do you say this in the Arabic language? You say هذا Alright هذا بيت هذا مسجد هذا باب هذا كتاب هذا قلم هذا مفتاح هذا مكتب هذا سرير and هذا كرسي Do you guys notice that they all ended in what? We're going to look at two things. They, all, they ended in تنوين which is a ضمة uh, not the تنوين is a ضمة but the one tenween that they ended with, with was a dhamma. Here we go. We're going to look at two things. The first one, go to the top where it says, Hadha Baytun. We're going to break down Hadha and we're going to break down Baytun. Well, Baytun doesn't need any breaking down, but we can see what's in there. This is a house. When you translate this word for word, it means this. And this is just house or a house. Excuse me. Now, how do we know this says a house when there's not an A here? There's no Elif there, right? This is the benefit of seeing tenween at the end of the word. 
If you say see tenwin at the end of the word, it means it is not specified, right? And it is indefinite. And that it's talking about a person, a house, a car, even though there's no letter there. That's what that tenwin is identifying for you. So, when I say hada, I'm actually saying this is a house. We don't have is in the Arabic language where we need to require it separately. Just saying hada baytun is already saying this is a house. So the tenwin makes that a. The tenwin? The tenwin then it's just a house. That's correct. The tenwin makes that a. The original state of all words. is ending with a dhammatain or a dhamma. That state is called marfu'un. Marfu'un, right, means that it's going to end with a dhammatain or dhamma for now. And in the Arabic you know, language, there's always exceptions and there's always other things that are going to be uh, outside of the rules. So for now, if you see Dhammatain at the end of a word, or a Dhamma, what are you going to say that it is? Marfur. It's in the nominative state. I'm just going to put down here, ends with Dhamma. Ends with a Dhamma. Or Dhamma Tain, two Dhammas. That's another thing you're going to probably have to know. Like, th you can't benefit from this class until you, you know how to read. If you don't know how to read Arabic, and you don't know how to identify letters when they're combined, or you don't know how to identify the harakat or what that word even means if you want to benefit from this class go learn that go learn how to read go learn the harakat it's different from understanding arabic um, and be familiar with you know those simple rules of reading all right hada we didn't break this down it's made up of two things and you you guys ever notice that there's like a small elif here and sometimes there is no alif, like when you're reading the Qur'an, it's sometimes there, sometimes not there. Well, it, it really is there. But because it's so known, people don't write it. But technically, it is like this. Ha, the. This part here is used to get the person's attention. Ha, right? Just like you see in the Qur'an, when they call out the people that get their book with their right hand, people get their book with their left hand, what do they say? Ha umuqra'u kitabiya. See that ha? So get that person's attention, it's like saying, hey, that's what ha is for. Now we get to the second part. The. This is this. The is this. And when we get to ذَلِكَ You're going to see also the It's got the It's got this there But then there's other letters added And we learn when we add those letters together What it does هَذَا بَيْتٌ This is a house Let's move along now uh, Go ahead and turn the page actually to Page 6 we read all of those things, and there's images, images for each one. And we're going to try to get to the end of, uh, end of the chapter. All right? We learn about ma. Ma. Is it going to be an ism, fi'l, or harf? Is it a noun? No. It's not a noun. Is it a verb? No. What does it make it? It's only a half. That's how you need to categorize things. So you need to know for sure. You're like, hmm, what does ma mean? Ma is actually you saying what? Ma means what? So if you ever hear me say 
ma ma'na what is the meaning of and then I'll say baytun what is the meaning of bait you say house all right ma means what ma hadha hadha baytun a hadha baytun na'am hadha baytun there's some new words there a hadha baytun so if ma means what a al istifham alif of istifham alif of inquiry right or inquiry means is or are could even mean did actually look at that just this one letter Arabic language you mean did like if I say Adhab did he go right um, For is, like we have here, a hadha baytun, is this a house? So hadha is this, a is you saying is, and then baytun, a house. And for are, like a dhahabtum, or a tadhhabuna, are you all going, right? But we will get to that when we get to it. And then he answered naam, naam is the Arabic word for? Yes. Yes, hadha baytun. Next one. Ma hadha? Go ahead and read that, Amir. Hadha kamizun. Hadha kamizun. This is a shirt, right? And we know kamiz to mean the long, the long thobe that people are accustomed to. Either one is called kamiz. Bilind. Hadha sarirun. Does he say hadha or? A hadha sarirun. There's a big difference, right? One, he's making a statement. The other, he's? Asking a question. هذا سرير What did he answer? لا هذا كرسي. Good. لا هذا كرسي. لا. No. That's not a bed. That's a chair. Right? Something. If you get in chairs and beds, it's confused. <laughs> Maybe it's an advanced type of chair. Like a futon or something. Yeah. Or it's like, hey, is this a bed? No. لا ليس, you know, ليس سرير. That's the word I was telling you earlier. ليس. Yeah. Uh, let's continue. Go ahead, Amir, one more time. Ahada miftahun. Okay, ahada miftahun. What does he say? Is this a. Read the next line and then we'll translate both of them. La. Hada kalamun. Hada kalamun. Ahada miftahun. Is this a key? Is this a key? It says, La hada kalamun. Again. <laughs> Something's going on. What kind of student, what kind of person are you? You can't identify key from pen. But, you know, they're just trying to get you to ask the question. They're not really being literal about it. We'll, we'll have, you know, poke fun at it, but uh, really, it's, it's a really, really good book to take. And then I'll read this next one. Ma hadha hadha najmun. Is a picture of what? Star. What is this? It's a star. Tamreen. Tamreen is the Arabic word for exercise. exercise. And the plural is tamarin. Tamreen, tamarin. So what they're asking of you here with all these images, you know, is to identify the teacher or the left or the right side will say ma hadha and you're supposed to say hadha and then answer with the picture. So you say ma hadha hadha miftahun. هذا كتاب هذا قلم هذا باب هذا بيت and lastly let's keep moving التمرين الثاني remember we took الدرس الأول right the first lesson so I'm saying التمرين the exercise I'm not saying أول anymore I'm saying ثاني which means the second tamreen, the second exercise. Ahada baytun. Is this a house? How would you answer, Bilind? La, hada masjidun. Yeah, but it's technically house of Allah. Oh. <laughs> Trick question. So it's you can answer yes or no. 
With this one it says a hadha baytun. Is this a house? You say hadha baytullah. The house of Allah. Or you'd say or you'd say na'am hadha baytullah or you'd say la hadha masjidun. Yeah. So kind of a trick question there. A hadha miftahun. What do you say? La hadha qalamun. Yeah. La hadha qalamun. A hadha qamisun. What do you answer? Na'am. And, and remember, if you're following along for our online viewers, I'm not going to always repeat something, so just go to the next thing that we're doing. So if you notice, I said, Ahada qamisun, you're supposed to follow along and give me the answer. Right? Okay. Ahada qamisun, what did you say? Naam, hada qamisun. Naam, hada qamisun. Amir. Ahada najmun. Naam, hada najmun. Naam, hada najmun. At-Tamrinu Thalith. We're moving along swiftly now. Alright. Iqra waktub. Iqra, like we took earlier, read. Waktub. Write. It's telling you. Iqra, you read and you write. Hada maktabun. Right? Maktab is a new word. It means desk. Hada masjidun. This is a masjid. Hada qalamun. And if, if you're following along and you don't know the harakas, as I'm saying it, go ahead and put the harakas there so you can go back and look at it later. Hada sarirun. This is a bed. Ma hada. What is this? Hada kursiyun. This is a chair. A hada baytun. Is this a house? La hada masjidun. Ma hada. Hada miftahun. What is this? This is a key. We get, get to the next section and it's also a harf, right? And it's also used for questioning and it's called men for who? Men hadha. And it's used for female and male. Men hadha hadha tabibun. Ma ma'na tabib? Doctor. Man hadha hadha waladun. The boy. The boy. So, yeah, walad. A hey, boy. Man hadha hadha talibun. Bottom right picture. The student. The student. A hadha waladun? La. Hadha rajulun. Is this a boy? There's no, this is a man. Turn to page, page nine. Ma hadha hadha masjidun. Or I'm sorry, page 10. We were on 9, turn to 10. Ma hadha, a hadha masjid. What is this? Is this a masjid? Then you would answer, na'am or la. Yes or no. Man hadha, hadha tajirun. We got a new word there, right? What's the meaning of tajir? Businessman. Businessman, merchant, trader, right? With a D, not uh, T A R. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah. T-R-A-I-T-O-R -I -I Not traitor as in, you know, betraying his country. Traitor as in he's trading. The picture, the second picture now. Hadha kalbun, right? That's a dog. Ahadha kalbun la hadha qittun. What is that a picture of? It's a cat. It's a cat. It's a cat. Is this a dog? That's what he said. Ahada is this Kelbun. Is this a dog? He said La Hada Qitun. Hada Himarun. Right? And then he says, Ahada Himarun La Hada Hisanun. What's a himar? Donkey. Donkey. And I told you guys this before. Remember, like calling somebody a donkey in Arabic is bad. You call somebody, hey, ya Himarun. It's just degrading, like even English is degrading, but you know, they use so, so much more worse, or words that are so much more worse, that donkey is not that big a deal. But when you call somebody donkey or kelb in the Arabic language, it's really bad. It's not a good thing. You don't go up to them and say, hey, what's up, my dog? You can't say, hey, what's up, my kelb? It's really bad. You call somebody, you know, a kelb. Yeah. <laughs> that's the, you know, that's what you always do in the in learning a language. It's always the bad words you learn first. But 
they're not in, you know we're not using them in a bad way you can say himar on his donkey and kalb on his you know dog he says ahada himar is this a donkey la hada hisan right what's a hisan horse wa ma hada hada jamal what's a jamal a camel hada ma hada at the top of the page page 11 hada why did they say Wama? Oh, very good. So when they add wow, right? It just you means and. So they're asking you, what is this and what is that? So if I say ma hada, what is this? Wama hada, and what is, you know, what is this? So top of page eleven, ma hada hada dikun. Right? And Deek means? Rooster. Man hadha? Hadha mudarrisun. Right? Who is this? He is a mudarris. Remember we took at the beginning? Ad dars al awwal. Ad dars. It's similar to? Mudarris. Ad darsu. Uh, I'm going to erase this here. Mudarrisun. And sometimes, like I remember before, we also mentioned Kesra can be under this uh, Shedda. It doesn't have to be down here for it to be Kesra if the Shedda is there. You could put it down here or you could put it underneath the little W there, also known as Shedda. So you see some similarities Dal, Ra, Sin, Dal, Ra, Sin. And to make it into the person who does that, Mudarrisun. All right, it takes on a different form, but the letters are still shared. So it's teacher. Yeah, so he says, who is this? He said, this is a teacher. A dars is lesson. Ahada qamisun, is this a qamis? He says, no, hada mindilun. Right? It's a handkerchief. It's a kerchief. Yeah, it's a kerchief, a handkerchief. He says, is this a qamis? Is this like, you know, a shirt? He says, no, it's a kerchief. It's a handkerchief. Iqra waktub, read and write. And this is where we get to the conclusion of our lesson. Now, I would say that, um, you know, we kind of went through this lesson a little bit fast. And it'd be beneficial if we go through these little by little. But I'm going to go ahead and just ask you guys to read this at home come back the next day and that's where we're going to begin from so this will be your homework uh, that last temerine on the page 11 just go ahead and read everything that we took and you're going to find that most of it is in there the pointing the answering asking a question um, and inshallah ta'ala you'll find that the next classes that we have they're going to be a little bit longer um, they're going to be with more descriptions so just bear with us for this first class and you'll see Arabic will get easier as you go along. Don't forget why you're learning Arabic. Your goal, especially for Arabic, should not be monetary. Your goal for Arabic should be to learn the language of the Quran. You cannot stand and pray unless you, you know, you could stand and pray but you won't understand what's being recited. Every time you pray in Salah, it's always Arabic. It's always going to be like that. So you have to say, I need to learn so I can understand what's being recited. In Taraweeh, in Tahajjud, in Fajr, in Dhuhr, in any prayer, right? Um, also to understand the Arabic language so you can understand Islam properly. There's absolutely no way you can understand Islam unless you understand Arabic. And even then, just because you understand Arabic by itself, doesn't mean you know about Islam now. You have to have studied it. You have to have taken it from uh, a scholar and learned from that scholar. You can't just open up a, a book and say, I'm now going to be a sheikh because I've read from cover to cover. You can't tell me I read the Quran 25 times and now that makes you an expert of Quran. 
So just, I'm just telling you the steps to understanding Islam. You need the Arabic language. But relying on the Arabic language alone is not sufficient for you to become one who issues fatwas or verdicts or rulings. It is, it's not enough that you know Arabic to, uh, you know, say I can now understand everything being taught in Arabic. Uh, I'm sorry, not everything being taught in Arabic, everything being taught in Islam. But what it will help you is to when you hear a hadith, it now has an effect on you. When you hear an ayah, it now has an effect on you because you understand its general meaning, right? And that's what your drive should be. Every time you're tired, I need to understand the Qur'an. I'm going to go into class. Every time you feel like I can't make it, or the class is too long, or it's not as motivating, or the teacher is not as exciting, doesn't matter, there's other channels. You don't like it, you can check other channels. There's plenty of teachers out there. But this is our class, this is what we're teaching. Everyone is welcome, it's you know, free of charge. So make sure you remind yourself as to why you're learning so that you can benefit and you can, uh, inshallah, have a better understanding of the Qur'an. You had a question? or? Uh, where can we buy this book? Can you put the link? Where? Yeah, we'll go ahead and... Uh, this book, you can find it on Amazon, by the way. You can find it online um, as a PDF or you can order it from Amazon. Uh, good, yeah, we'll have you know the uh, the editor go ahead and put it inside the link and uh, inshallah we'll see you next time barakallahu feekum wa jazakumullah khair yeah